Sir Michael Redgrave, at 75, has just launched his autobiography, In My Mind's Eye. And in the book, he reminisces on his life and loves on the stage and off. In a minute, we'll be talking to his son, Corin, an actor in his own right, of course. Before that, we'll hear from Sir Michael himself. He allowed me an interview, even though he's been very ill with Parkinson's disease. I went to see him at his beautiful cottage in Hampshire. It's a funny thing that you'd think that would be so, but it wasn't so even from the beginning of the illness. There's something about the cure. No, there isn't a cure. There's something about the medicines one has given. that makes one simply accept. He came from an all-acting family and his distinguished stage life began in a supporting role to his father, Roy, at the age of two. And that's when I went on the stage. I was told to run, run on from the side and my daddy would pick me up and so on. But um, what happened was that um, I ran on from the side and burst into tears. Did you always want to be an actor? No, I always loved acting, but I didn't want to be an actor until I was grown up. Uh, my mother didn't think it was um, a good idea at all. She said, acting is no life for a man. Sir Michael left Cambridge and worked as a teacher, but soon he was on the professional stage in Liverpool, where he met his actress wife, Rachel Kempson. In his debut London season, he played in As You Like It as Orlando to a Rosalind played by Edith Evans. She heard that the young Michael had got a tempting offer to act in America. She said, You don't want to go to New York. You want to stay here with me and be Orlando. Well, who could resist that when there's a very fascinating woman saying it? They fell madly in love, and Redgrave had started a career in which he played all the leading classic and Shakespearean roles. As for the cinema, at Cambridge he'd written that the talkies would never last, and for years he refused every offer of film work that came his way. Then in 39 he starred in Hitchcock's classic The Lady Vanishes, he was soon to become a matinee idol. Now, looking back uh, over your career, would you say now that you prefer the film or the stage side of it? I suppose I should say working on the stage is what I prefer. But I won't say that because it has the effect of making you think that I didn't like filming. And I like it very much. I think some of my best performances have been in films. One of his best films was Dead of Night, where he plays a ventriloquist who thinks he's possessed by his dummy. Like both parents and his wife, all Sir Michael's three children have made their names on the stage. Lynn, the youngest, who now lives in America, son Corin, one of our most versatile actors, and, of course, Vanessa, who's now almost as famous for her radical politics as for her radiant acting talent. As a father, Sir Michael himself, a socialist, doesn't disapprove. Vanessa has purpose. And there are not many people that can say of their children that they have purpose. Do you miss acting and your involvement with stage and films? Well, it's not true to say I don't miss the theatre and films. I do miss them. Especially when I see someone playing a part that I think I could have been effective in. But there it is when can't do anything about it and one doesn't resent the, what is a medical fact.
Yeah, that's about the longest speech I've made in this interview. <laughs> <laughs>